had 80% of the starting black quarterbacks or the black quarterbacks in the league on one team in Buffalo. Uh, who they have? E.J. Emanuel. They had Tyrod Taylor, obviously, and they had uh, Cardell Jones. That would be bad. You remember they used to always put, or back in the day, there was always this this thing about the best black TV shows. Uh, the networks would put them on at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, they might have been good, but you're forced to watch one and you don't see the other two. I'm going back to the days of just, you know, NBC, CBS, and, and ABC. So they used to always put, like, the best black TV shows that each network had on at the same time during the same day of the week. <laughs> Goddamn setup from Thorny. Get some. Ugh, I'm not even going to say that. She says, EJ Manuel, so fine. Good gracious. There ain't nobody talking about no EJ Manuel. From RC, Big L, don't be surprised if Cap ends up in Denver. Woo. Now that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. If you're the uh, Denver Broncos and you're. Uh, John Elway, you know, have had a history of, uh, of, uh, you know, bringing along quarterbacks, um, uh, and making, I guess, smart quarterback decisions, I guess. And, and we think about John Elway and his, his history in the NFL, you know, them bringing in, uh, Peyton Manning as the last piece to win a championship. They had a good defense. They brought in Peyton Manning, uh, even with this Trevor Simeon guy, not a bad player. They kind of got him off the, uh. Uh, you know, plucked him from nowhere. Um, this Paxton Lynch. So I don't know. I mean, Paxton Lynch or Trevor Simeon. Yeah, I like Colin Kaepernick. If you're talking about those guys, from WTXTY, and Mike Glennon gets 15 million dollars a year. Yeah, Mike Glennon, who hadn't started, and I think the number was four years. <laughs> Mike Glennon's getting 15 million dollars, and Colin Kaepernick can't get a job. <laughs> Very eerily familiar, uh, familiar to 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 the Stu situation. <laughs> you know, numbers speak. Or, uh, you know, volumes. And in, in your what you've done in the industry uh, speaks volumes. It's right there on paper. Uh, can't get a job. Can't get a job for whatever reason that may be. Uh, I don't know. It's just I can't get a job. Colin Kaepernick can't get a job. From uh, from Sidney Jackson, the Jeffersons were on the air for 11 seasons. That's a great run by any show. It's impossibly amazing when it was a black show. Wow. Didn't realize the Jeffersons were on that long. 11 years. That might be longer than San Francisco. I'm pretty sure San Francisco was only on for, I think, like seven seasons. I didn't realize the Jeffersons that had that good of a uh, of a run. Very good show. Um. From WTXTY, colonizing a niche, cap to Houston. They need a quarterback. There's a couple of options. Well, these options that you're talking about right now, Denver and Houston, uh, the word was that Tony Romo's going to go there. Would you rather have Tony Romo or Colin Kaepernick? That's an easy answer. That's easy to me. First of all, Tony Romo's not going to play more than two games probably. Colin Kaepernick will probably stay healthy. He's had some issues over the last couple of years with his health and getting these little surgeries or whatever. But for the most part, Colin Kaepernick's going to play. Tony Romo's not going to play really. He's not going to be available to play. It's just not. So, yeah, if I'm Houston or if I'm D- uh, Denver, uh, Colin Kaepernick sounds like a great fit. And what you do is you tell him not to – you know, you do exactly what, what what Peyton Manning did and not l- turn the ball over and not lose games. Yeah. And Colin, Ka- Colin Kaepernick, he's a guy that can uh, he can throw the football, but he can also run, you know, athletic as hell, which is a good thing, I think, if you're the Denver Broncos where you want to make sure and have a ball control offense, put your defense in good positions. Uh, your defense puts your offense in good positions where you get field goals and you know, you just don't want to turn the ball over. You want a veteran quarterback. From that boy, Chucky, yo, Doug, if radio called the Stews back and tell y'all to keep it plain, no P.E., no barking, 
uh, disagreeing with the bosses, would y'all go back? So wait a minute, stop. First of all, we never disagree with no bosses. You make it sound like we were malcontents. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let the record show. You make it sound like we were malcontents, like we were arguing with 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 the with the front office or the or management. That wasn't the case. Maybe we were arguing with management the last two months that we work. Okay, but we were on radio for close to twelve years. For eleven and a half years, we never had an issue with management. We did what management told us to do. We were, as they say, team players. Don't get it twisted. You you said that like we some type of malcontents or whatever. That wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. Um, but the, as far as the rest of your statement says, yo, Doug, if radio called the stews back and told you to keep it plain, no P.E., no barking. Um, let's stop right there. Let's stop with, the, with that before we get to the disagreeing with the bosses which, once again, is, is a misnomer. <laughs> uh, would you go back? Um, I don't think that I could go back if they told me to get to not give my opinion and not change my, my personal thoughts on topics. I would not do that. Now, as far as the way that the show flows, you say plain. Well, me plain is still better than everybody else, you know, amped up. Because me playing is going to be me. Uh, no P.E., no barking. Eh, I mean, that's more so the the the, uh, the thoughts of a producer and the production. You know, if the radio station were to go with different music and feel like they need to play this type of music or whatever for whatever reason, that's fine. But as long as I give you my opinion, I'm good. I, I would be fine with that. Um, I wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't be my choice. But a lot of times in this type of scenario where you're talking about radio shows and how they want to come across on air, that's all up to the to, to the producer. Like we were just, uh, I guess, lucky to have producers that were kind of on the same line of thinking as me and my brother. Like, you know, we had home team Brandon Leak. He was our first producer. Um, and really even before that, uh, Matt Edgar, the guy that was the uh, producer – uh, the uh, program director, you know, he never had a problem when we said, listen, we're going to play this pu- uh, public enemy music and we're going to play this hip-hop stuff. They were like, great. You know, that was just a suggestion. They could have said no at the time if they wanted to, you know, and, and we would have had to just suck it up and we would have still been the stews, but it would have been, you know, uh, much more drab, I guess. But now, nah, as far as that part, no. Um, but if somebody said, we're going to need you not to give your true uh, opinion, then, no, I would have a problem with that. I would definitely have a problem with that. From Eugene Jackson, Doug, the stews were the Black Panthers on the radio. Eh, that's fine. You could say that. Um, we never went out and, and, and carried rifles around saying we were going to shoot Whitey. <laughs> right. We never went that far. But, yeah, I mean, you say we, we were the Black Panthers. I mean, that's not a bad thing to me. From Mr. Harper in the chat room on Spreaker.com. What up, Mr. Harper? He says, for the record, several national shows have finessed P.E. from the stews, and the barking wasn't that big of a deal. Right. Uh, I posted on Twitter a couple of days ago. So I'm at the house, and no lie, no lie. Um, On one minute, I watch, what's that show, Dan Lepertard, the Dan Lepertard show? What's it called? Uh, With him and Bomani Jones. So it's Dan Lebertard. I don't even know the damn name of the show. I rarely watch it. Uh, so it's Dan Lebertard. That that show with him and Bomani Jones and Lebertard's daddy. And they do this little thing where Lebertard's daddy is basically reciting the words from a hip-hop song. We did that. Hub's Hip Hop Hysteria. <laughs> We did that. Now, I will acknowledge, I keep it real, we kind of got the idea from another show on the radio station. They had done it before us, but we kind of took it to the next level, and I think more or most people 
were, you know, introduced to that whole thing through our show. But I, but I will give credit. There was another show, uh, The Bottom Line, with Chris Domino and, and uh, uh, Domino and uh, Cellini. They had done the same type of thing before with David Hubbard. That's the name of the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the news guy. And so Hub had this authoritarian, kind of like uh, professional speaker voice. And we had him come in. And we get him to recite, you know, with some nice music, some nice classic music behind in the backdrop. And, and he'd recite the words to a Gucci Mane song. <laughs> so one minute I'm watching that. And then later on after that show goes off and I turn on this new Jamil Hill and Michael Smith show where they do sports center now at six o'clock. And the show comes on, and it's freaking public enemy. It's freaking public enemy. I like, ain't this a bitch? <laughs> ain't this a bitch? And the name of the show is uh, highly questionable. Ain't this a bitch? Within an hour time frame, somebody doing Hub's Hip Hop Hysteria, they call it something else. I don't know what they even call it, with the guy Poppy. And then shortly after, you know, ESPN's coming on with Public Enemy. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Ain't this a motherfucker? Yeah. So, hey, I guess they say uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. And a lot of people don't know, uh, you know, that the Stews were using Public Enemy music since 2001. A lot of people that watch ESPN, they've never heard the two live studios on radio. You know, they don't know that we did this thing called Hubs Hip Hop Hysteria. We had a old uh, white, uh, you know, very lame sounding, <laughs> no disrespect, very lame sounding guy reciting hip hop lyrics. Nobody, you know, 90% of, 95% of the population don't know anything about that. It, it, just, it, just, it just makes you go, you know, like Arsenio said, makes you go, hmm. Absolutely nothing we can do. It's almost like if a, if a tree falls in the forest. Did you hear it? Or oh, however the hell that damn thing goes. This is very disturbing, man. I mean, I like working too. I need a check. <laughs> Man, y'all must have been blackballed. I don't know, man. Some people say we've been blackballed. Some people say that's just Hollywood. You don't worry. It'll be okay. Shit. We going on five years, man. I need to be okay quick. But I think I said this last week, man. God's got a bigger plan for me, man. It's going to be okay. <laughs> It's going to be okay. God's got a bigger plan for me. I don't believe he let me, you know, uh, let let it go down like this. I mean, maybe God's playing a joke. Maybe he's playing an April Fool's joke, but for the last four years. Back in three minutes. Reboot the system off the hard drive Some say 
Why compromise when your brother in the sky telling dressed up lies like Charlie might say, I don't like your vibe, but never took the time out to apologize. If you're about to lose your head, use a turtle naked tie. Everybody feel the need to Babylon pie, but it never made.